It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news. This is the Southwest Outdoors Report. Hi everyone, welcome in. On today's show, we're going to be talking about and demonstrating the role that power plants play in fishing around our region. Yes, you can catch a lot of fish in power plant lakes like the one right behind me. Welcome in to Lake Conowa. Now, Lake Conowa is located right in the middle of the state of Oklahoma. It's just north of the city of Ada. Now, as you can see right behind me, that's the key. That is an electric generating power plant owned by Oklahoma Gas and Electric. Now, the role it plays is that the water in the lake is circulated through those turbines. It cools those turbines off. But what it does for us as fishermen and women is that it artificially warms the water, keeping the fish more active year round. Yes, power plant lakes in our region are good right into the summertime months, and I'll tell you why a little bit later. So I'm going to launch the Nitro Z8 into Lake Conowa, and you go back to the FSN studios and get this show cranking with all of our fishing reports and news upcoming. But first, here's Julie in the studio. A check of the fishing tables for the weekend indicates that the main game fish activity will take place in the afternoons. Saturday's peak should begin around 2.20 and is predicted to have the best conditions of the month. And the primetime Sunday will begin at 3.20. Expect sunrise to take place at 7.17 and the sun to set at 7.46. And evenings will showcase a waning moon 86% illuminated. We'll be right back with all the latest fishing information from around the region. Stay with us. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Mercury, the official outboard of the Southwest Outdoors Report for 11 years running, by Academy, right stuff, low price, every day, and by Tracker Boats, fish the fights. Got it. There he is, good fish. Yeah, welcome back everybody. You're on your Southwest Outdoors report today coming to you from Central Oklahoma's Lake Conowa. It's a power plant lake and we're talking about power plant lake fishing around our region. There's a, a good solid chunk from Lake Conowa. You can see they're real light colored fish here and there's a reason for that and I'll tell you about it in just a second but let's put that fish back right now away he goes now real quickly I want to show you that I caught that fish on a striking KVD square bill crankbait that's the one that Kevin Van Dam designed and uses to win lots of the Bassmaster tournaments that's kind of a shad color with a yellow stripe down it the bigger fish seem to be pulled out away from that bank and I did a little scouting yesterday I'll show you some video from yesterday coming up in a couple of minutes but caught the bigger fish a little further out the smaller buck bass closer in everything spawns and becomes more active sooner on a power plant lake than any other cold water lake in our region here at Conowa we've got bass in all three stages we've got some pre-spawn bass like that one that have not moved up to spawn yet still back out in 8 to 12 feet of water We've got some bass that are actually up spawning in the reed beds. And then we've got some bass that have already spawned, skinny, have laid their eggs, and have moved back out off some points. So something for everybody, power plant lakes in our region. Let's get your fishing reports cranked up for this week and check in with Cajun Phil and Kevin down in Louisiana. Hi friends, Cajun Phil here with Fox Louisiana Fish Report. Well, as you can see, the winds hadn't stopped blowing. We're still getting hard wind. Either out of the north or out of the south, it don't matter, it's been blowing. One thing that's been doing, keeping the waters here around Calcasieu Lake and all across the state, very muddy and unstable. Kevin and I just got back from Delacroix, Hopedale, Shell Beach there. All the guys were catching lots of speckled trout, big numbers of trout. Not a lot of redfish, but a lot of trout. They're catching them mostly on live shrimp under par poppy car. If you're closer to home, well, we've been over there, but Kevin's giving a call every day. Our guys here local, they're catching redfish in the shallow water in the marsh. Again, plastics under a poppy cart, or they're catching lots of trout in the lake. The birds are starting to work. The shrimp are moving in. It's just gonna get better and better each and every week. So whatever you do, tune in right here to Fox Sports Southwest. 
This is an old Cajun field and Captain Kevin as, you, as we bring you the reports each and every week. We'll tell you what's going on. Remember, that's CajunFieldHotmail.com or 337-540-5530. Keep in mind, we now own the Cajun Paradise Lodge and Charter business. And I tell you what, you want to come down, we've got a great lodge. We've got all the guys that will take you out. You'll have a good time. Until next time, this is Cajun Phil for Captain Kevin. Then happy fishing and may God bless and we go see you next week. There's something. All right. Well, he's nothing like, uh-uh, don't do it. Nothing like the earlier one. That one got caught on the little Strike King red eye shad, a little small bait. And uh, what I'm finding out here, there's a bunch of these uh, old dead reeds floating along here. If I throw up next to those, it seems like the little buck bass are there, which means the bucks are getting up there, getting ready to make a nest. The females are still hanging out deep in six or eight feet of water, getting ready to move in and spawn. We'll let that one go back. On every power plant lake, there are gonna be two distinctly different sides of the lake. There's gonna be a discharge area. That's the area where the hottest water comes out of the power plant. That's gonna be the warmest water in the lake. The fish are going to move up and be most active and spawn in those areas first. And then around on the other side of the lake will be the intake area. That'll be the coolest water on the lake. Those fish will spawn and be most active there last. Early in the season, fish the discharge side late in the season, fish the intake, the cold water side. Now, one other thing I wanna mention is that a lot of people get off the power plant lakes and totally go away from those when the summertime comes and the water gets really hot. That's a big mistake. You can catch a lot of bass and a lot of other species as well on power plant lakes right in the heat of the summertime. It can be fantastic. Okay, let's move along now and check on the rest of your Oklahoma fishing reports at lakes other than here at Kanawha, and here's Gary Dollahan. Hey, our Oklahoma weather wasn't very nice to our spring breakers last weekend, but man, this sure didn't seem to dampen their spirits at all, and lots of people have crappie on the mind. Steve Higgins from Tulsa told me he fished three consecutive days looking for crappie each day. Started out on Keystone, then went to Eufaula, third day Fort Gibson Lake. He said he actually caught his best keepers at Fort Gibson Lake fishing in the enclosed dock at Sequoia Bay Marina State Park on the south side of the lake. I went and checked that out. Daryl Covington was there fishing. Daryl's from Coweta. He was having a good day catching fish inside the enclosed dock and outside using Bobby Garland, Baby Shad, and Minnow Miters. He said most of his fish were coming for like 15 to 22 feet deep. And he said the morning hours seemed to be the best fishing time. Now, the dock has a fee. It's $5 per day, $4 per day if you're 65 or older. While there, I also ran into Gerald Brown, who is the dock expert at Sequoia Bay Marina. Yeah, we're fishing just jigs. There's black and chartreuse and black and orange and some hair jigs. And they're about from 20 to 30 foot deep right now. And usually from 7 in the morning to about 9, we do pretty good. And then from about three to five, we did pretty good. I also talked to Kellen Davis of Glenpool, who had just gotten back from Kerr Reservoir. He said they had a great crappie trip down to that lake. He said most of their fish came from less than four feet deep, caught a good number of fish over a pound, had a ball. He said if they're in four foot of water, they'd have their bait about two feet below a cork, putting it in around the stumps, in around the grass. Great fishing trip. Their best bait was a Bobby Garland three inch slab slayer in sunrise color. But you know, that's typical for fishing this time of year. You can catch them shallow, you can catch them deep. A lot of it has to do with the conditions, the sky and the wind as to what's going on. But you know, one thing about it, you can catch them if you don't go. Right out in front of those reeds again, little bass. Another buck, another buck. Well, we found out how to catch the bucks. Anyway, that's a fat little male bass right there. All right, we're going to a break right quick. I want to mention something to you before we do though. We're going to do something this season on your Southwest Outdoors report that we've never done before. And that is, to those of you who are, who are our members, we're going to be showing you some of the exact locations where we caught our fish. In some cases, we'll show you a map. In some cases, I'll just be talking to you and describing the areas. 
Some cases we'll be showing you the exact baits, the exact techniques, giving you a lot more detail that we don't have time to give you here on the television show. Now, in order to get this information and actually see the locations where we caught these bass, you do have to be a member. Let's go ahead and put this fish back. There we go. Now, in order to do that, first you need to go to the front page of our website at Southwest outdoorsreport.com. It looks something like this. You'll need to sign up to become a member of our fan club. It's free. Once you sign up, then you'll go to the members only page, and that's the page where we've got lots of guides and lodges and outfitters, charter captains, all the information for our members only, and it's there that we'll post all this proprietary information of where we caught our fish, how we caught them, and much more information that you as a member will get, and you'll get our newsletter that comes out each and every Thursday morning with lots of gear, lots of fishing news, and lots of information that you'll love. It pays to be a member of the Southwest Outdoors Report Fan Club. Stay with us. Coming back to Lake Kanawha in central Oklahoma, just a couple of minutes. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. By Lutes, setting a new standard in fishing performance. Feel the difference. By Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. By Strike King Lures, number one in fishing. And by Whataburger, just like you like it. We're talking power plant lakes on this week's Southwest Outdoors Report. We are at Lake Conowa, located between Seminole and Ada, Oklahoma. I want to mention that I actually got here before dark yesterday, spent the night. I did have a chance to fish for about three hours and get some idea of what's going on here at Conowa. And I did manage to catch a couple of really solid bass. Now the first one we're going to roll in here, you can see this bass was caught on a lipless rattling crankbait out on one of these do-nothing, flat, shallow, silted-in type of banks. But I was fishing the outside edge where it drops off six to eight feet, and that's a good solid three-pound class bass that I caught there. Then I moved around to the other side of the lake, the warmer water area where the hot water discharge is, and I managed to catch another good bass on a spinner bait. Now this one was right up against the edge, one of those reed beds, so we have bass in several different stages, pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn right here at Kanawha and at other power plant lakes around the region. Most power plant lakes in our region are older lakes, so they're very silted in, most of the timber is gone, so the only place they have to spawn is at some of these reed beds right up on the shoreline. So I shot some video of those to show you what they look like. They're dead right now. They haven't really turned green for the season, but you can see lots of little pockets, lots of back bays behind the front edge of these reed beds. That's where those females are gonna get back there and lay those eggs and spawn. You can use a plastic bait, flip and pitch underhanded back into those reeds, get your arm broke, not only here at Kanawha, but at power plant lakes around the region. Let's check right now with Brian Hughes, the rest of your fishing reports from Texas. Hi everybody, on this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by Johnson's Fiberglass Collision Boat and RV Repair. For my money, the best in the business. We have to talk about a couple of conditions that are going to affect fishing. First of all, early in the week, we had a nasty cold front come through. And as you watch this, you're gonna be on the warming side of that cold front. We also have a full moon. That means we're gonna have a mass migration of bass into the shallows to begin their spawn. Now you'll wanna fish less than about six feet of water on lakes like Richland Chambers, Athens, Palestine, Fort, Cedar Creek, and other lakes in that area. Use a spinner bait, a Cordell Spot, Texas Rig Craw or Lizard, or your weightless Cinco's. Now a little further to the north on a lake like Ray Roberts, for example, you wanna add a couple of feet of depth and slow down your presentation with those same lures. Those fish are gonna be in a little bit colder water. And further to the east or south on lakes like Toledo Bend, Sam Rayburn, or Conroe and Livingston, the bass will be in full spawning mode, so move a little shallower and focus on just the Texas rig stuff. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by Johnson's Fiberglass Collision Boat and RV Repair. Let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, Texas Outdoors Journal brings you this week's report. And once again, Texas Outdoors Journal has been named the best outdoor magazine in Texas when it won first place in the major outdoor publication categories. 
Now, if you fish or hunt in Texas, you should be reading Texas Outdoors Journal. We'll tell you where to go, what to expect once you get there, and how to do it a little bit better. Pick up a copy of Texas Outdoors Journal on newsstands or subscribe at the website on the screen. Well, as we close out the last weekend in March, weather has once again warmed compared to the chill experienced earlier this week. The reality is not a lot has changed. Water temperatures dip, but continues to struggle toward the 70 degree mark, and the winds continue to blow, but you can use that to your advantage. On the middle coast, some big speckled trout have been caught on the upper Laguna Madre on live shrimp under a popping cord. Now, the wind, the winds have blown some good Redfish have come from around Ingleside along protected shorelines. That same pattern is working around Port Isabel, Port O'Connor, and even Galveston and Sabine. As conditions warm, try fishing waters three to four feet deep to the shoreline. Look for grass beds where available or guts. Topwater lures have worked as have the new voodoo shrimp under a popping cord. Birds continue to point anglers to good trout and scattered reds in Galveston and Sabine when the winds have allowed. Soft plastics on one quarter or three eighths ounce jig heads have scored in slightly deeper water. Now an old fashioned cast master silver spoon will also allow for long casts and catch you some fish. All of the jetties are reporting solid sheep's head and black drum action. Redfish are in the mix at Galveston and Freeport jetties. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday have a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides each day. I'm Bill Olson, and I'll see you on the coast. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer by Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. By Motor Guide Trolling Motors, engineered for anglers. And by Nitro Performance Bass Boats, pure performance. Welcome back everyone, it's time for Ask the Pro Feature. Our question this week is from Tyler in Mansfield who wants to know, what are some of the key water temperatures to target for bass? Good question, Tyler. Let's check with 2004 Bass Master Angler of the Year, Gerald Swindle, for the answer. You know, I think uh, when you talk about water temperature, you, it, there's only two ways to look at it. It's what's on the surface and what's down below. Uh, we only read what's on the surface. Like with my hummingbird, I'm reading the first one foot of the water. And I do pay attention to surface temperature. When is it the most important? It's always going to be early spring when the fish are starting to spawn and move up. I'm looking for around 57 to 60 degrees. In the fall, it's about the same. When the water temperature gets back below about 63, 64, that seems to be the key to me when the fish really go to bite. So remember those two temperatures and remember spring and fall is when it's the most important. Thanks, Gerald. If you have a question for one of the pros, just visit our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com, follow the Ask the Pro link, and send us your information. Now here's Barry with our Costa Big Catch of the Week. Time right now for this week's Costa Catch of the Week winner. This week, he is Alan Ehlers of Irving, Texas. He's showing off a near eight pound largemouth bass, which is a big one for Lake Bob Sandlin in East Texas. One of my favorite lakes in all of East Texas. I've been fishing it since I was a kid. He caught that one on a crankbait off a point. If you'd like to enter the Big Catch of the Week contest and have a chance to win your very own pair of Costa sunglasses, all you have to do to enter is go to the front page of our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com, fill out the form, attach your photo in the form of a JPEG, and if you're the winner, you could win your free pair of Costa sunglasses like Alan does on this week's show. And this month's frame style of the month for our Costa Catch of the Week is tag. It's a beautiful frame that we've been wearing on this week's episode right here at Lake Conowa, and you can go to the Costa website right from the front page of our website, click in that partner area there, click on the Costa logo, take you right to their website and you can see all of the frame styles and lens styles and there are some new ones for this season. Next up, it's the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, the right gear you need to catch bass at a power plant lake available at your Academy Sports and Outdoors location. We showed you the two baits that we caught the fish on today, the lipless rattling crankbait, the Strike King red-eye shad, and the KVD square bill crankbait. But I wanna talk about line. 
If you're gonna fish a crankbait or a lipless rattling crankbait, you wanna go with Strin Fluorocast. It's extremely invisible line, very limp and pliable, but yet still very durable. 12 to 14 pound test is the largest you wanna use fishing either one of those two crankbaits. Now, if you wanna move up tighter, you wanna fish those reeds with a spinner bait or flip a plastic in there, then you need to go to something heavier. You can go to Strin Original, you can see that in the purple box, the long standing line that's been around forever, stood the test of time. You can use 17 or 20 pound in that, or you can use Strin Sonic Braid. Very small diameter, very slick coating on this braided line. Use 30 or 50 pound line to flip and pitch around those reeds. And lastly this week, we've got a brand new feature we call Stuff That Matters. I've got a little saying that I've used for all of my adult life. It's called, let the plumbers plumb and the roofers roof. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, addictions come in all shapes, models, styles, and sizes. Everything from alcohol to drugs and even some we don't think about like eating disorders or working too much. Addictions can take over our lives in many different shapes and sizes. This week on Stuff That Matters, I want to urge you to do something. It's where the roofers and the plumbers come in. You see, there are lots of very capable, qualified people out there that are highly trained and skilled in helping folks that are trapped in some kind of a situation that very well could ruin their career, could ruin their personal life, could ruin their family, or could ruin their relationships. So here's what I'm asking. If you're a person that's in one of those situations, I'm asking you to reach out and get that help. Help is available in lots of different places, from your church, from HR at your workplace, through your insurance provider, or through many community service programs. But yes, help is available no matter what situation you find yourself in. Let the roofers roof and the plumbers plumb. Hey, I hope you enjoyed our time this week at Lake Conowa between Seminole and Ada, Oklahoma. We'll see you right back here next week. Next week's episode airs Thursday night at 10.30 p.m. unless a basketball or hockey game runs late. And if it does, you can always check that out on the front page of our website. We'll have the very latest there and in our Thursday morning newsletter if you're a member of our fan club. Now, the show re-airs Saturday morning at 8 o'clock so be sure and set your DVR for the Saturday morning airing. You can watch the latest episode of our show always 24-7, the front page of our website in full HD, and you can go to our YouTube channel. You can link to that from the front page of our website, and you can catch up on any episodes you missed this season. You can even go back and watch all of the episodes from last season as well. And you can see more news, videos, and photos at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Southwest Outdoors Report. From Oklahoma, until next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.